Hi there. Now here we've got a problem on equilibrium of a particle. We've got a particle here hanging on two light extensible strings. So if you'd like to have a go at this, haven't had a chance to read the question, I'll just give you a moment to pause the video. When you come back, I'll take you slowly through the work solution so you can compare your methods and working with mine. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. So we've got this particle C then of weight W newtons. It's attached to these two light inextensible strings. So in order to find the tension in AC and the value of the weight W, we need to mark on the forces acting on the particle. So first of all, we've got the weight of the particle which is W Newton. So just put that as W Newton's down there. Next thing we need to do is mark on the tensions. Now we're given that the tension in BC is 6 Newtons so that would act in that direction. Just mark that on as 6 Newtons and then you've got the other tension which we've got to find in AC. So that's going to act in this direction. And I'll just call that T, T Newtons, OK? Now, in order to solve a problem like this, where we've got to find the tension in AC and the value of the weight W, I'm going to need to consider resolving in two perpendicular directions. And for a problem like this, we would resolve horizontally, so I'm going to just draw a dotted line in there, and vertically, so draw one in there. We also need to mark some angles in, and because we've got 30 degrees here, and this line AB is parallel to this dotted line here, this angle in here must be 30 degrees. It's alternate to the 30 degrees there, so just squeeze that in as 30 degrees. Hope you can see that. Similarly, we've got alternate angles here. This angle in here is going to be 50 degrees. OK. Now, when it comes to working out what the tension in AC is and the value of W, we've got to do resolving. We've got to split forces that aren't on these dotted lines into components. That's the T Newtons and the 6 Newtons. So I'm assuming that you're familiar with splitting forces into components. If not, do check out my video tutorials on this. But essentially, remember that when we split this into components, we're replacing the T and the 6 with forces like this, OK? For the T here, the horizontal component, because it contains the angle of 30 degrees, remember, is always cosine. So it's going to be T cosine 30 degrees, which acts to the left. And the one that doesn't contain the angle, the perpendicular component, is always sine. So that's going to be T sine 30 in this case. As for the 6 Newtons, that can be split into two components. The one that contains the angle of 50 degrees is cosine. So this component to the right is 6 cosine 50, and the one upwards, which doesn't contain the angle of 50 degrees, which is at right angles, is the sine one, 6 sine 50 degrees. So what's happening is that we're replacing those tensions with those components, and we think of the forces acting on C as made up of the forces that you see here. So when it comes to resolving forces, let's just put this down for part A, I'm going to look at resolving the forces to the left, OK? To the left purely because this component that contains T is positive. So looking at this, resolving to the left, I can see that I've got T cosine 30, T cosine of 30 degrees, then minus the 6 cosine of 50 degrees. That gives us the resultant force horizontally acting on the particle C. And it's moving neither left nor right, so it's in equilibrium. 
there must be no resultant force. Remember, these forces are perpendicular to the direction that we're resolving in. And so, therefore, they have no effect. So this is the resultant force acting on C, and that resultant is equal to zero because it's in equilibrium. Now, as I say, I wouldn't normally draw those components on. I would just be thinking of this equation just through this diagram here. OK? So, there we go. All I need to do now is just rearrange this for T. And if I do that, I can see that, therefore, T must be equal to 6 cosine of 50 degrees. And that's divided by the cosine of 30 degrees. Make sure your calculator's in degrees mode. And if you work that out, you should get 4.453 and so on. So to three significant figures, this is going to be 4.45 newtons to 3SF. OK? Now, when it comes to the next part, part B, all I've got to do now is just resolve vertically. And I'm going to look at resolving downwards, OK? Because we've got to find W, and I'm going to keep that in the equation as being positive. But it's up to you. You can resolve upwards if you like. So downwards is the positive sense. So again, let's think of our equation this time without putting those components on. We've got all of W acting downwards. So we've got W, right, W. And then we've got the components of the tension of 6 newtons and the T newtons. Now, the 6 newtons, remember, could be split into a horizontal component and a vertical component. The horizontal component, because it contained the angle, was 6 cosine 50. That's not going to have any effect because it's perpendicular to this direction. The only one we want is the one upwards, which was 6 sine 50 degrees. That's acting in the opposite sense to this, so it's going to be minus, minus 6 sine of 50 degrees. And then, for this tension, that could be split into two components, one horizontally and one upwards. The one horizontally had no effect. The one upwards does, though. It's in the negative sense to this, so it's going to be minus. And because it doesn't contain the angle of 30 degrees, it's going to be the sine component, T sine 30. OK, so it'd be minus T sine 30 degrees. They're the only forces acting in the vertical sense on C. And because it's in equilibrium, that resultant force must equal zero. So just as a reminder again, I'll take away those tensions and put on the components. So hopefully you can see that W minus the 6 sine 50 minus the T sine 30 are the only forces acting on C in the vertical sense. So that force there, resultant force, must equal zero. OK, so I know I'm work working slowly through this, but it is just to demonstrate the method. OK, let's put those tensions back on. There's our equation. All we've got to do now is we can substitute for T, take this value here, 4.453 and so on, rearrange it for W. And you should find then that if you rearrange it for W, W is going to equal 6 sine 50 plus T sine 30. T, remember, then, is 4.453, and so on. And that's multiplied by the sine of 30 degrees. So if you work that out, you should find you get 6.822, and so on. And rounding this to three signal figures just gives us 6.82 newtons to 3SF for W. OK, so I hope that's given you some idea then how to go about that question.